views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hey, this is Jen from Radically Distinct Radio, and I have a new text club that will send you updates when new shows go live. All you got to do is take out your phone. That's right. Take out your phone, open up a text message, and this is the number you're going to text. It's 31996. And in the message, you're going to put RAD, R-A-D. Then I'm going to send you a link to the RAD chart, and then you're going to get regularly occurring messages once a week when new shows go live. Hello and welcome to Radically Distinct Radio. I'm your host, Jen Morgan, coming to you from Studio 212 at the Soundcasting Network in South Lake Union, Seattle. You know, Keith, I just realized that you have this Deadpool image up above your uh, computer screen. You do? (laughs) I just watched the movie last night, so I know I get the reference. (laughs) He's kind of a douchebag, no? A lovable douchebag. Okay. Okay. So if you're, um, we're currently on Radically Distinct Radio, I'm doing a self-worth series. So if you're just tuning in, maybe this is the first show you've ever heard, you're going to want to get the RAD chart to measure your self-perception. Um, you're going to want to text RAD, the word RAD, to 31996. That's going to send you a chart and it's also going to send you a couple episodes so that you can get uh, up to speed on what we're talking about. Okay. Now, last week, we talked about how perception is reality and how knowing yourself as the number one is key to managing other people's perception of who you are. Now, in case you think that's deceptive, the truth is that really it can be. And um, mostly that's a problem when other people are deceiving us. And the only way to really know if that's happening is to be able to see through the facade and point it out. Politicians, special interest groups, these are masters at, you know, these people are masters at shaping perception. They're organized and intentional of how they want to be perceived in the stories that they tell. And that's because perception is reality. And the only way to change the perception of how others perceive you is to really first know who you are and the story that you want to tell. And the only way to do that is to invest the time, energy, and resources into creating that for yourself. So here you are, investing your time into understanding who you are and how to perceive your brand. So this week, I'm going to talk about the first roadblock to being able to perceive your value and the true cause of indecision indecision and apathy. So I'm going to start out by telling you about why Radically Distinct exists and why this is a relevant conversation to be having with on Radically Distinct Radio. Radically Distinct exists to empower people to become better CEOs of their lives, careers, and businesses. And that's because I believe that teaching people to think about their time, energy, and resources as if they are a business, meaning as if you as an individual, like as you are a business all on your own, that that mindset, I believe, is the path to peace and prosperity, prosperity, prosperity across nations, um, where we each see each other's differences as valuable contributions to life on earth, natural resources that if allowed to be expressed would solve all our worldly problems. Maybe you think I'm a dreamer, but that's what I believe. But in order for that to occur, Each of us has to learn how to value our own differences before we can have anybody else value our differences. So we need to understand, I need to understand how I, Jen Morgan, am uniquely valuable in the world because I exist and many lineages do not anymore. In fact, they didn't make it to 2017. That in of itself is worthy of being respected that you have value, the fact that you're alive today and that other lineages are not. And this is hard to do for us individually, I believe, because 
first of all, we've been trained to be civilized and to be civilized is to sit down, be quiet, do what people tell you to fit into the status quo. As soon as we start talking about our own individual value, we start talking about numerical data about our time, which means our hourly rate, because each of us buy and sell our time all day long. And some of us do it better than others. And I think that it can get very easy for you to get caught up in the job that you have and the hourly rate that you have, that therefore that means that's what your value is. Um, I think that's a, a strange way. I mean, that is a very realistic way to think about it. But there's also this other way. I mean, the hourly rate that you make in a job that is not really allowing you to express your talents is going to be a lot lower than the hourly rate that you make of something that you've created completely on your own that is also very valuable to other people. Those will be completely different numbers. So the question is, how do you move your your value over into the space in which you're val you're getting paid to do the very unique things that you have to offer versus the things that anybody else could do so that you could actually raise your rates. How do you do that? Well, it starts by being able to define for people what that value is. And in business that's called a value proposition. And and for an individual person it's called a value proposition, but we usually think about it more like your personal brand. It's hard for us to do as individuals because it's hard to see ourselves and our differences. They're just a natural expression of who we are. But Radically Distinct exists to help you create a vocabulary about what it means to think of yourself as an independent business and make decisions that align to you and your success. Your, it, because business is not just about one person. It's a community of people working towards a similar goal. So you want to be able to... So Radically Distinct exists to empower you, to empower people to become better CEOs of their lives, careers, and business. Why? So that we can proactively, co-creatively create a future where we all flourish instead of it being this thing where I'm successful because you're not successful, which is really the cause of, I think, war and and um, a lot of you know decisions that aren't made for the best interests of a large group of people. It's because we think that that for somehow there's some scarcity mindset that in order for this group to be successful, this group must be disenfranchised. And I believe that that's a limitation of our understanding of our value as human beings. So this all comes back to in order to have that dream ideal that I have, we all have to learn how to value our own individual selves. You are radically distinct. You just need to know how to express what that is. And to do that, you need a context. And that's what this series about self-worth is all about. Giving you context for how to perceive how you value yourself so that you can make changes to be valued at your most of possible. You know, how do you do that? Which box are you in is the first step. Which on the rad chart, which box are you in? Are you in the rad box? Do you believe that if you're not radically distinct, you're radically extinct? And so you prioritize personal development and continuing to develop those differences into something because you know that the world changes and you've got to continually evolve yourself in order to be on point, in order to be in shape, in order to be valuable in the world, in order to be authentic, you have to consistently be updating yourself. So are you in the rad box or are you in the dodo bird box? Are you this person who says things like, I am who I am and screw you if you don't get me. This is the way all things have always been done. It's never going to change, you know, and eventually that becomes reality for you and you slowly go from being completely irrelevant to being exhausted, apathetic and eventually extinct. And I got to start all the way from the beginning. You can't even use what you had before in order to get ahead again. You have to start completely over. That's the dodo bird box. Or are you in the me too monkey box? Do you look out at other people who supposedly have some sort of idea of success and then try to mimic them in order to get some idea from some sort of feeling or some sort of essence that maybe because you look like everybody else who's successful that you too are perceived as successful, but you never really know the root of their success. So therefore, when things change, you have no idea how to adapt and you're in a slippery slope down into the dodo box. 
Um, or are you in the imposter box where you've got a pretty good sense of who you are and the value you bring to the table, but for some reason you cannot get people to rally behind you. You cannot get things done the way you intend because at the end of the day, you can't figure out how to deliver on your promises. So that's the first step is to figure out which one of those boxes that you're in so that we can make some strides to get you into the box you would like to be in, which if you're listening to Radically Distinct Radio is in the Radically Distinct Box. And the Radically Distinct Box is all about being able to have an authentic expression of who you are. It's about keeping yourself in shape, keeping your skills in shape so that you're relevant in the world and ideally getting paid to do what you uniquely are meant to do. So let's start with the first roadblock that we're going to have to getting ourselves there. This is the first roadblock. This question, what do I want? It's a stupid question. What do I want? I want everything. I am a, I am a human. That means I am the, and the, when we're talking about animals, I am at the top of the food chain. I want everything. I want everyone to bow down to me and I want it all at all at once. <clears throat> and Uh, that's what we think as humans, we want it all. And we have lots of proof that we can have it all. They even create courses about it called how to have everything you ever wanted, where they basically tell you that the key to having it all is focus and priorities. Because the truth is you cannot get it all, all at once. It's one thing at a time. So you have to have focus and prioritize first things first. And that's hard for humans to do because it requires making decisions about what's most important and either or questions. We don't like either or. We want the guy that we're dating to be financially successful, incredibly attractive and really funny. And, you know, this long list of things. Well, what's number one importance? And if you could only have that one thing, what would that one thing be? And this is a hard game to play. And when you start to open it up beyond just your relationship to your entire life, it becomes 10 times harder. So a better question than what do I want is what is the future I envision? Vision is a perception of the future that shapes your path, whether you realize it or not. And the problem with not knowing it is like being pregnant, but not knowing it. And you're basically like, oh my gosh, I'm getting fat. Maybe it's my thyroid. I should get on thyroid medication. Oh my gosh, I'm throwing up every day. I have nausea. I need to get some sort of like nausea medication, right? You're solving these symptoms that have nothing to do with the fact that you're not actually just gaining weight and you're not actually just having nausea. You're prego, right? So when you're preco, what you need to do is not the same as when you have a thyroid issue. So that's what happens when we have a vision and we're not clear on what it is, is we're running around blind, making decisions about what we think we want in life without having clarity of what it is that we are going towards, whether we want to or not. And here's the problem with that indecision is a decision. So when you're not clear on the vision that you have and you're moving forward or you're not moving forward, you're basically making decisions whether to walk on the path that you're meant to walk or not. So we block ourselves from receiving our vision with the question by saying things like, I don't know what I want. When really you don't want to know what you want because if you knew what you want, you'd have to change. And we don't want to make a change because it's uncomfortable. You'd rather just live in this blissful ignorance than to change. And that's really the issue. Clarifying your vision is scary because it means you have to make choices about what is most important. And people tend to avoid making choices, want everything all at once, and you end up doing nothing, right? Indecision. Apathy. It's an apathetic decision. Isn't that the best thing that I come out to? Instead of being an empowered decision, it's an apathetic decision. So vision is a very important element of self-worth. Clarifying it is a symbol of self-love. Because what you perceive about the future should have value to you. It doesn't matter if no one else thinks that it does. You do because your future matters to you. And when you clarify it, it's much easier to find people whose vision aligns to yours and to figure out how to work together to co-create a future that is beneficial to both of you, which is to think like a business. Um, now, I have... 
I'm going to tell you a story. Um, This woman that worked with me, she came to me and she was very passionate about helping women get pregnant. And she went to a lot of business trainings and marketing trainings and very clear that her niche needed to be helping women get pregnant. She was a, a coach who helped women get pregnant and she was doing all of the things right all of the things that you do when you're supposed to get out there and market yourself, all the products you're supposed to create, all the talks that you're supposed to, she was doing it all right. She even had a group of women. I think there was 15 women that came regularly to this meetup group that she had, but nobody would hire her, right? It was a very, she had to do stuff for free in order to get clients. And really what it came down to as I start, we started working together is she's attracting a group of women who desperately want to get pregnant tomorrow, And what she was offering was this holistic healing solution, this long-term healing your body from the inside out solution, which is very valuable and actually is the path to being able to get pregnant or naturally. But most of the women there were just thinking, what, you know, what drug can you give me? What solution, what remedy can you? So she was basically at the tail end of these women's search for being able to get pregnant instead of being able to figure out how to meet them in an earlier stage that aligned to what it was that she wanted to offer. Now, I just said exactly what her business problem was clear as can be. But when she came to me, that was not clear to her because what she was doing was she was she was doing all of the right things. She was getting in front of all of the right people, but it wasn't working And the root of the problem was that her market focus, what her niche needed to be and how she was putting herself out into the world was in the, was it angled the wrong way and it was positioned the wrong way to the wrong group of people. And her vision about what she wants for the company is so big and so comprehensive that she could not see that for herself. She just looked working on step one from her perspective and not making a connection. And then all of the feedback that she got from other people was based on all of the things that they thought, all of their ideas about what her business should be. And over time, she started losing the desire and the and the thought pattern and the and the brilliance that are, that had brought her into wanting to do this and build a business around it in the first place. So she was having a hard time falling through on business projects. She would invest in a training program. She'd invest in some online marketing, but her follow through would not be matched because her, what she believed was the right way to go and the way she was going because that was the right supposed business strategy did not align. So she never really felt fully committed to it. When you have a vision for the future, other people are going to put all kinds of stuff on it unless they are very clear on their own vision of the future. And we as individual people, unfortunately, have not been taught how to have a vision for ourselves. We've been taught how to pass from one grade to the other. We've been taught how we're supposed to put together a resume so that we can get a job. We've been taught how to socialize ourselves and act in a certain way. We're not necessarily taught how to dream and put that dream into an action. So we go out into the world and we look for people who have done it before and they're giving us processes and procedures based on what they're doing. But the only way to figure out how to apply that to yourself is to understand the difference between the vision that you have and the vision that they had. And hopefully find some people to get on your team to help look through this, you know, what I would call like a lens, your brand lens. The way that this particular company, company A, is going to realize its vision is so totally different than company B. And so now to bring this all back to my client, you know, after we figured out this, this for her was a huge breakthrough because she did not see this gap between the perception she had and the vision she had for these women and where these women were actually at. And the reason why it was so hard for her to see it is because she was stuck between the vision she has for the future and what was real in this particular moment. So she's making decisions in her business based on the vision that she has it's causing her holding her back from moving forward effectively a hundred percent because it's not quite working, but it's going in the direction she wants to go. And she's not sure how to like remedy it or fix it or, 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 you know what I'm saying? 
So having the space to work on the vision that you have for your company, for your career, for your life with somebody who can help you separate out the differences between other people's ideas of what that's supposed to mean and what yours actually are and the group of people that you need to reach. That's what we call personal branding. It's also called branding. If you're talking, if you're talking about building a business, you know, either of those things, it's the process of branding is organizing and simplifying those things so that you can get to the process of telling the story that you intend to tell, not the story that everybody is putting on you, but instead the story that you're intending to tell. But you, ha- in order to do that, you have to know the difference between the people who are going to receive it and the people who are not and be okay with that which takes us back to understanding ourselves as the number one. And that's why it's really important to be very clear about the unique value that you bring to the world so that you aren't looking to other people to validate you, but instead looking to other people to find out if they could benefit from the value you bring. Okay. That is the end of today's episode. Um, I have just a couple things just unwrapping that up. The first roadblock question or the first roadblock you have to being able to recognize your self-worth is this question. What do I want? A better question is what future do I envision? Working through your fears and objections about whether or not that's possible is going to shape your path. It's going to tell you where to go first, how to talk about it. It's going to tell you all the things that you need to know. And when you say, I don't know what I want. What you're really saying is I don't want to know what I want because it's going to be very uncomfortable when I admit to myself that I'm not in the situation that I want to be in because I'm going to have to change. All right. That's what I got for you today. Thank you for tuning in to Radically Distinct Radio. Next week, I'm going to be on the Dr. Pat show talking about positioning and why that's important when it comes to self-worth, but also why that's important when it comes to developing your business. And if you like this show, please rate and review us on iTunes. It'll really help us out. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Radically Distinct. Tweet with me at Jen Morgan Brand. And if you've been thinking, you know what? I really needed to build the brand around my business or I could use some help with my personal brand. Go on over to my website, jenmorgan.com and contact me through that contact form. And until next time, my name is Jen Morgan, empowering you to be radically distinct.